All right, today I'm gonna show you guys how to process a real mid-side recording. So I actually really recently started posting reels on my Instagram and I had one reel where I showed how to do a mid-side recording. So if you haven't checked that out, it's at Kato Noise. It's one of my first few reels that I posted, which wasn't too long ago. So you can go check that out. But basically what you do is you take a microphone and figure eight and you point it to the sides of the space you're recording in. And then you have something like a cardioid pointing at the actual sound source. And the whole idea for mid-side recording is that it gives you this really cool sense of space. And so what I have here was actually just an experimental recording that I was doing with some clients in the whisper room that I have here now. And so we were just testing things out, kind of experimenting a little bit, trying different things out. We're not going to actually use this recording for anything, I don't think. It's a cover, so hopefully I don't get demonetized for this video. Uh, we'll find out. We're going we're gonna to learn. I'll probably play a few seconds so you can kind of hear it. But um, I have a Patreon if you want to support my channel. This might get demonetized, so check out my Patreon, maybe. Shameless plug there. It's uh, patreon.com slash noise. But anyway, we're not gonna actually use this for anything, but I did do an actual mid-side recording here for part of this session, so I figured I would show you how, how to process it. So basically what happens is, you'll notice here I have a ribbon microphone, I have the Aston Spirit microphone, and then I have a copy of that Aston Spirit microphone track. So when you're recording, all you have is the two tracks here. So I have the one ribbon and then the one Spirit. One Spirit. But anyway, uh, so the Aston Spirit was set to figure eight, and then my ribbon microphone is a cardioid microphone, and that was pointing at the actual performer. The figure eight was pointing to the sides of the whisper room. So again, when I'm actually recording, it was just this ribbon microphone and this one track for the spirit microphone, and that's it. So then when you go to process it, the basic processing that you have to do with a mid-side recording, if you wanna, I don't know, do it proper or whatever, is you wanna duplicate the microphone that is the side microphone. So that's gonna be the figure eight microphone. So you duplicate that signal. So that's what I did here. I right clicked on the spirit, I went to duplicate and I created this duplicate copy of the track. So now this audio here is an identical copy of this audio here. And then what you wanna do is on the duplicate track here is you wanna flip the polarity for that track. So what I did here is I just opened up an iteration of Pro Q2. And then I went to the bottom here. And if you hover at the bottom here on this plugin, there's actually a polarity flip button. So this little no looking symbol here that's lit up blue, that is the polarity flip button. And a lot of plugins have this button. So you don't need this specific plugin to do this function. For example, you could, let's see, I think just the stock EQ that comes with Pro Tools has it. So if I do EQ seven band, for example, there's the same button right here. So you can use different plugins to do this. Uh, I just chose to use the Fab Filter one because that's my favorite EQ and I always reach for that one first. But yeah, so that's what you wanna do is you wanna flip the polarity on the duplicate of the side microphone, so the figure eight microphone. And you know, if I didn't make it clear, we have the figure eight microphone, that's called the side microphone, and then the cardioid microphone, sometimes it's an omni or something like that, but that microphone is called the mid, it's the mid channel. Okay, so now you're almost done. So the only thing you have to do now is take these side tracks here, so the spirit, the figure eight microphone, the side microphone, and you pan one of them all the way left and then one of them all the way right. And then what you can do is I often group them together. So I already created a group here. I just highlighted these two tracks, hit command G, created a group called sides. You can see it right here. And so now when I drag them, they're in tandem, they're linked together. And you'll notice if you bring it all the way down and then you hit play and start to bring it up, you'll kind of feel that, that sense of space coming in with the microphones. It's actually a really cool effect. And that's it for the basic processing. And then you can add whatever other things you wanna add like reverb, compression, all that stuff. So I'm just gonna play a little bit of it so you can hear how it sounds. And I'm gonna bring the sides in and out so you can kind of hear that difference.
And you'll notice, I'll actually find a spot here where the artist is singing, but there were actually two people in the booth here. And so the artist that's singing the most is actually to one side slightly in the booth. And because I did this type of recording technique, you can actually hear her on that side of the booth instead of uh, a more mono sounding environment signal. So I'll find that and play that for you so you can hear that. And this kind of bugged me that the singer wasn't right down the middle, but I don't know. Uh, let me see. So that's that. And then if I bring this all the way down, you'll hear it sounds more mono. So, you know, it's kind of cool. I like using this recording technique. It's a lot of fun. I used to do this a lot in college when I was recording like uh, choral and or orchestral stuff in in like the college church and the college uh, rehearsal hall and stuff like that. So uh, it's kind of fun. It's great for giving a sense of space. And if you have a really nice acoustic space, it's definitely worth trying out and see, seeing what you think. So that's the basic idea of how to process a mid-side recording. Again, if you want to see how these microphones were actually set up, it's actually in video in my Instagram, so at Cato Noise, and that's the same exact setup from this day. So that's the same exact setup that you're hearing here. So feel free to check that out. Again, I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Cato Noise. And other than that, if you could like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know, all the stuff that people on YouTube love, I would really appreciate it. And I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay. I don't know why I keep getting out of breath here. But, um, but my butt, but my butt. That's my thought. I feel like I wasn't made to be human for this long. Like, my body just hates me sometimes. I'm like all creaky. I don't know. I'm moving soon, so that's a bit overwhelming. Everything's in boxes. I'm gonna move my studio at the very last second, but I've started moving all my personal belongings because I don't really need most of those. And well, I've started boxing them up, not actually moving them, but that's gonna be a whole adventure. I guess I could make some videos about moving studio equipment, moving a whole studio from one location to the other. Not that my studio is that big, but there's enough to make it kind of a hassle. I don't know. So. I'm moving soon. Moving, moving, moving. I haven't moved in like six years, so. <sighs> yeah. Okay, bye.